Did I block your way? Let me get this out of your way. Go up there. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. You too. <laughs> so hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. <laughs> And that was Claire, Buddy and Claire. Um, Eleanor, what, you want to make a you want to visit? All right. Oh. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. So today is uh, so today is September eighth. Try this again. All right. So it is eleven twenty in the evening on September eighth. I have to be in bed very soon as I have a work trip tomorrow at 10.05 or something. Um, originally, it was supposed to be um, Vegas, Sacramento, and Oakland turn, and then back to Las Vegas, which is a lot of ups and downs, ups and downs, um, turbulence, trying to get a full service in the middle of all that. Uh, just a lot of work for a short, uh, for five hours credit. Five hours and 15 minutes credit, but the Oakland turn was canceled. So all I have to do now is fly to Sacramento, sit there for an hour and two hours and 15 minutes, I think, and then fly back to Las Vegas. So no problem. I'm not taking a lunch. I'm not taking food. I'm just taking some snacks and things um, and, and my toiletry kit just in case because things... Anything could happen. Um, so I did two things today. I did, uh, I went to the gym, which I was very happy with myself, very proud because I had zero motivation, did not want to go. Um, I went to uh, the gym and I did some biceps, some triceps. There's this kind of rope thing. You just kind of pull, it's an endless rope pull. Did that for a little while. And I got on the treadmill for one mile. I know it wasn't much, but it was one mile that I did I wouldn't have walked had I not gone. Uh, I went at like six increment, whatever the inclination is, uh, whatever percentage that is, and I'm just a, a three mile an hour walk. So nothing crazy, but again, it was something I I finally did it. Um, went to the PO box as well at the airport. I was expecting one package. I did not expect the other three packages. Uh, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of what some people sent me. So I'm very, very grateful and very flattered. First, I bought I bought these. These are some masks that I ordered on Amazon. Um, they're the KN95 style masks. I have some of these in white, uh, which I was wearing. Uh, but my company requires that now that our, our masks be black disposable ones or our branded ones that they gave us. And the branded ones that are not very comfortable for me. They don't fit my face at all uh, and they're terribly uncomfortable. So I've been wearing these black surgical masks that you've seen me uh, wear the past few months. Um, and I've worn them like that with my beard because, you know, I got the vaccination and I'm fairly consistent with wearing my mask. So I figured that's good. But this Delta variant that's burning through the country, in particular, Texas, Louisiana, Florida. One in five cases right now originate in Florida. I wonder why. Hmm. Um, so I've been really kind of conscious of this and have decided to go back to wearing these KN95 masks, but to really make sure that they fit properly, I'm going to be taking off my beard again, and it's going to kill me because I... Honestly, ladies, it's like if someone just kind of removed your chest, your boobs, and you, you know how you would feel. You're like your femininity would be at risk, you know, and whatever. I wouldn't imagine what the, what that's like, but it's like that. Like when I shave off my beard, there's something of me that is missing, and I just hate it. Um, it's my best feature. People always comment on my beard, and well, that's about it. But um, so... I bought these uh, K95 masks and they just, they fit really well when I'm not wearing a beard. So I'm going to be taking uh, my beard off because yeah, uh, I, this, this COVID business, this Delta variant is not playing games and uh, I can't afford to get sick. I am vaccinated. I'm completely vaccinated with the uh, Moderna uh, vaccination. Uh, I do want my booster shot when I can get one. Um, but the, the vaccination does not say that you're not going to get sick ever. Uh, there are breakthrough cases, and they expected that. 
Uh, not as many as there are, apparently. So um, the vaccine doesn't guarantee that I won't get sick, but it does reduce the, uh, the chance of me getting seriously ill and ending up in a hospital uh, by a significant margin. The people who have had the vaccinations, the average age of the person who gets sick and then seriously gets sick and goes to the hospital is like 78 years old. So it's it's really the elderly, the people who have immune uh, deficiencies, they're getting sick with Delta variant. I can't afford to risk that. So I'm taking the beard off. It's going to kill me. But uh, I'll do that tonight, maybe tomorrow, or if if I, if I just can't get to it when I get back from this trip. Uh, but I went to the P.O. Box at, um, as well, as you, as I just told you. I got these and I received three more packages. This is a, um, a little case, a little package of peanut butter packets from Justin's. Uh, Lee sent me this, which I think Lee is, don't get me, please correct me if I'm wrong. Lee, is, is Lee also white ferret? Because you know what I mean? Like, so if it's a different Lee, please let me know. But um, I, I think this is also white ferret. But if it's a different person, please let me know. Um, I'm excited to try these. This is going to be perfect to bring with me tomorrow. I'm not taking a lunch bag with me. I'm just taking my required items and some toiletries um, just in case I get stuck or something. So I'm very excited to try these. I always carry a a container of peanut butter with me on all, every trip in my uh, rolling tote bag. Hi, sweetheart. I love this cat. Because um, it's handy, you know. Um, so there you go. Something else that was mailed to me, um, let me show you this, is this is from White Ferret. I'm going to open this so that the cats can't see it because I opened it when they could see it and they freaked out. Let me get back here so I can open it and show it to you. It's from my car. Don't freak out, honey. Don't freak out. Look at this. Can you see that? Isn't that cool? Look, it's, they're clearly cat eyes. Uh, and I think it looks like Buddy, and I'm sure that uh, White Ferret thought the same thing too. Oh, I'll fold this later. Uh, I am super excited about this. Um, I will use this when I have that moment extra to put that up, because that's going to take a little more finessing. Um, there are times I'm in the parking garage, the parking lot, and I can see the shuttle coming. So I just, um, someone else, was it Michael? Who sent me that? And I think it was Michael, uh, sent me this other um, screen thing for my car that just folds up real quick and it pops open. So I'll throw that in there if I see the shuttle coming, but I will use this because it's probably more insulating from, from the heat. So I'm super pleased with that. And that's from White Ferret, super excited. Again, I think Lee and White Ferret are the same. Uh, real OG, OG subscribers. They've been around from the beginning. Um, so the last thing that was mailed to me, look at Claire. Hi, Claire. Okay. Uh, the last thing that was mailed to me was uh, this. Look at this. Randy, are you watching? Look at this. Um, it's a 32 ounce bottle of uh, Purity Made Simple. I'm like, I I'm going to start drooling in a minute. Uh, this is from C. Beck, and I really hope they don't mind me reading this card because it's just the sweetest thing. So I apologize in advance. Some people, when they send me a card, they'll say, please don't read this uh, on, you know, on camera. Uh, but I have to read this because it's very sweet. It's also self-serving because... <laughs> It says nice things about me. Um, hi, Stephen. I know you'll love this ginormous purity. Couldn't believe it when I saw a jumbo and I thought of you. Thank you for all your videos. I cry and laugh with you. From the first time you called Buddy your boyfriend, I was hooked. Um, I'm not met. There's quite a few people who watch these videos just for my cats. Uh, I'm not a flight attendant, but dream of it. I love cats. I have one named Sam. I had one named Sam. Past tense. Um, anyways, I just wanted to uh, you to know that I tell my daughter all the time about your stories and adventures. I hope you enjoy this and keep creating. You brighten my day every time. Every time you post, uh, see that. Thank you so much. This, anything, cards, gifts, anything that I'm sent, 
uh, even even uh, emails, I have to tell you, I'm so over the moon, blown away, flabbergasted, flattered, um, because, I mean, it's not going to be a secret to people who really watch my videos or know me, uh, is that my ego or my self-worth or my self-value, however I should describe that, is sometimes it's teeny, tiny, teeny, and it's very fragile, my ego uh, in that um, I just, I have never been the cool kid. Um, I've never been really cute. I've never, I just always felt mm, less than, I think. Um, uh, especially during my, what the, the decades that I drank and used other substances. Uh, my self-worth was just in the toilet for decades. Uh, it's better now. Uh, and that's partly because of you guys uh, and this darn channel of mine. Um, pretty much every trip I go on, someone stops and goes, oh my God, it's you. I thought I recognized you. You're taller than I thought you were. Um, that's always like the second comment I get. I'm almost six foot two. I'm six, six one and a half. Um, but uh, just the comments and the, the, that, that this person saw this bottle of face wash, thought of me, number one, and then purchased it. It's very expensive. It, this is like 60 bucks at least. Uh, and then mailed it to me. I mean, just come on. Um, you know, real true friends behave like that. And it just kind of blows my socks off every time someone thinks of me. It's even peanut butter. You know, like that's a friend uh, who knows you like peanut butter and this would make your life easier. You know, that's a friend. Um, so I, I just, I can't thank you enough. It just, it just really blows my mind. Um, so on that note, on that very happy note, I'm going to give the cats their evening treats. Funny, they're not ganging up on me yet. They will soon if I don't stop talking. And then I'm going to jump in bed because I have to wake up, uh, very soon. So thank you very much for, um, for this. I will see you in the morning. All right. Good morning, guys. Hi. So it's 9.23. My check-in is at 10.07. You can see I shaved. You may not see the rest of my face. See how red that is right there? My face is pretty red. Anytime I shave, right after I shave, my face is a mess. I probably have psoriasis or something, but it recovers shortly. Uh... Gonna go check in, meet my crew, and then head to Sacramento. Let's go. Hey guys, all right, so it is broiling hot on this aircraft. We've been catered from both ends of the aircraft, so it's like super hot in here. It's 110 degrees outside. Um, I shaved, as I told you. I used shea butter to, to like moisturize my face because it's ravaged. Uh, the first shave after a beard, my face is like ripped up. But, uh, so I feel very sticky under this mask, but complain, complain, complain. Um, uh, I've met my crew in the crew room. I've flown with everybody at least once. I just don't know anybody very well, but um, I'm the most junior, so I'm flying position B. Should be easy. We have uh, 110 passengers uh, checked in, 126 books, so shouldn't be a problem. Um, easy day. There you go, Sacramento and back. Hey guys, all right, so we're in Sacramento. We have an, another mm, hour and a half left of a sit here. Um, the flight here was an hour and two minutes. We had 120 some odd people on board. Uh, one UM, an unaccompanied minor. Uh, one crying baby for a little bit, only because their teeth are coming in. So no challenges, easy, easy flight. The crew is a good, solid crew. No, con no concerns, no complaints. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, as you can see, and I've already mentioned, I've shaved. My face is a little, a little torn up. Uh, the first time I shave, the first time I shave, my face is always like, ah, I hate you, um, and I kind of hate it too. I'm not a fan of my face. I'm not. I know. I'm, I just don't like my face without a beard. I feel like much more comfortable wearing a beard. People say I look younger. Uh, I'm 52, 52 and a half almost. Uh, so I don't look that bad except for the torn up skin, but I think I look 10 times better with a beard. The one concern complaint I have is this jawline kind of thing. Look at that. Arr! I used to have a jawline 
people say, oh, you have a square jaw. I'm like, no, those are jowls. <laughs> uh, one day in the future, when I can afford it, I would like to have just a little, a little lift right there. I would love it. Oh my God. Uh, maybe I'll go to Colombia or something where they have that work done. But in the meantime, I'm just going to hang out here, nibble on some food. Uh, we have another hour and a half left or so. So I'm going to sit back, chill, relax, maybe close my eyes for a few minutes and then we'll be heading back to Las Vegas. I don't know our load or the times yet, but it can't be too big. So I will see you before we go back to Vegas. So hi, we're gonna be boarding in a minute. Um, today's flight to Vegas is gonna be one hour and four minutes. We're completely full for some reason, no idea why, but fun. Um, flight's an hour and four minutes, so I'll be Boarding. home in bed in about two hours. So very excited. I need a nap. I need a nap. Hey guys. Hi. So I am back in Las Vegas. I'm in the parking lot uh, of the LGBT center. Um, I'm going to go to a recovery meeting because that's the kind of day I've had. Yeah. The first leg of the trip, no problem. The second leg of the trip, why is this so hard? Why is this so stressful? You know what I'm going to say face coverings, masks. Why is this so hard? I don't understand. I really don't understand. Um, yeah. So sprinkled through the back half of the aircraft where I spent most of my day today, um, on the second leg, I had a bunch of mask rebels. They just didn't want to wear their face coverings. And you know, I, it was like, uh, when when I would ask them to wear their face coverings, hey, you know, could you just please just pop it over your nose for me? Sure, 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 right up to their nose. And I'm like, sir, I'm sorry to be a pest, but that does have to go over your nose. Man, I got a big nose. You can't make me wear this mask over my nose. And I'm like, sir, you're right. I can't make you, but it is a federal mandate. It is a rule that we have to follow. If you do want to fly with us today, you're going to have to put your mask over your nose. The, the boarding door was still open at this point. And uh, so he did it, but like so grudgingly. And he gives me this death stare as he does it, like slow motion. Do you know when like toddlers or small children test you to see how far they can push you? That's what it was like today. I've had worse, like things have been worse. It was just this constant poke, poke, poke. And finally I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I can't. Um, thankfully the rest of my crew was to really together. We're all on the same page, uh, great crew communication, but it was just, it was un unnecessarily stressful. This one guy, and I shouldn't talk about passengers too much, but here I am. Um, we're, we're landed, but we're still moving. We don't, we're still on an active taxi. We were nowhere near our gates and a whole bunch of people for some reason get up and start to open the overhead bins. Now we have gone through some serious turbulence. I'm not sure if I even mentioned it, but both legs today, we had significant turbulence where we were like lifted up out of our seats, right? All sorts of stuff could have shifted inside the overhead bins. It's not safe to do this. Well, uh, the lead makes an announcement. They all ignore. So I get up, I walk down the aisle, Hey guys, please put your bags back up in the overhead bin. And this guy looks at me. Again, he's trying to give me this death stare as if he's going to win, right? And um, he, I said, sir, could you please put your bag up over the oh, in the overhead bin for your safety? It's a huge garment bag, really big, big garment bag. And um, he's like, you've been yelling at me this whole trip. I had asked him to put his face covering on. You've been yelling at me this entire trip. Okay, sir, would you mind just popping your bag in the overhead bin for everyone's safety and just have a seat and buckle your seatbelt? <sighs> Unnecessary. Unnecessary. So I'm about to go into this recovery meeting so I can remember what it's like for me to try my, my best to be the better person. Uh, and then I'm going to go home and love on my cats really, really hard. <laughs> I need my cats. Uh, and that's it um, for today. The next video I'm going to film is probably going to be about my experience around 9-11. Um, I don't think I've ever done a video about 9-11. Um, I, I feel, for some reason, I think it's the fact that it's the 20th anniversary. It is 
everywhere I look. Every time I turn the TV on in a hotel room, every time I turn on the radio, and every time I look at the newspaper, we're talking about 9-11. And that day will always be burned into my mind. So I figured I'd, uh, everyone else is making a video about it too, so I might as well um, share my experience with it. Um, it's it's a little different, especially at the end. It's definitely took a, a little twist um, but, um, yeah, I'll make a video about that on the 11th. I might as well make it on the date since I'm not flying that day. Uh, until then, I will see you later. Until then, whatever. You know what I mean. Bye. Fly safe. Woo! Okay. I know I ended the video, but I just got out of that meeting and thank goodness I went. It was a beginner's meeting. Uh, someone there celebrated 30 days sober. Someone got their first year sober which is like amazing someone celebrated 14 years and uh but it was a beginner's meeting so we the topic was really you know early sobriety and one of the first things i had to learn in early sobriety is number one i'm powerless over people places and things um but then i struggle with that because i'm a flight attendant during a pandemic and we have set rules by the government. Like, you will do what I say. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the, but we talked about, you know, powerlessness and um, and ego. And, uh, you know, when you, it, it's a toxic mix when you think you're in control or you have some control and your ego gets involved. You know, it's just really stressful. So... Uh, I'm really glad I went to the meeting tonight. It kind of put me right back in in uh, in uh, where I need to be, uh, right sized, uh, which is the phrase that we use frequently in sobriety. So uh, now that I've told you that, I'm going to end this video for real. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a great night. Fly safe.